Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you. We come boldly to the throne of grace again to ask for help in our time of need tonight to rightly divide the word of truth to your glory, to your honor, and to your praise. We thank you, Lord, for comfort, edification, and encouragement, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. We ask that you repeat the devourer for our sake, that we may hear your still small voice. And it's this word that hears in our, hear in our heart. May you order our steps in this word, that we may walk as your son, Jesus, walk, bringing glory, honor, and praise to your name. We thank you in Jesus' name that the people of God say amen, amen, amen and praise the Lord. Amen. God is good. Amen. May we see in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hebrews chapter 13, and we are in verse 20. Hebrews 13 and verse 20, that last phrase uh, in verse 20, through the blood of the everlasting covenant. What Jesus, what the Father accomplished through the blood of the everlasting covenant. Hebrews chapter 13, find your spot, and we'll read through verse 20. Praise God. Now the God of peace, as the apostle Paul is, amen, beginning the benediction of this chapter, of this uh, epistle. He said, now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep. He brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, the saints, through the blood of the everlasting covenant. Amen? Mm -hmm. Jesus' blood satisfied the Father justified the saints all of our sins are forgiven he's our great shepherd our deliverance through the blood of the everlasting covenant amen mm -hmm. that covenant that amen Jesus instituted amen as the testator Jesus himself had to die in order to activate this covenant that you are not, you and I now live under. Amen? Amen. Jesus is our propitiation. He's our satisfaction for the sins of all mankind. Amen? It tells us in 1 John that Jesus, chapter 2 and verse 1 and 2, that he is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the world. Jesus is our advocate. He's our mediator. We have one with him. Let me read verse 1. My little children, these things write I unto you. First John chapter 2, verse 1 and 2. My little children, these things write I unto you that ye sin not. That's the goal. That's the purpose, that we sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus through the blood of the everlasting covenant. We have an advocate with the Father. He's our mediator, amen? We have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he is the propitiation. He's our, amen, satisfaction. He's the satisfaction to the Father for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world, amen? Jesus died for the sins of the whole world. He didn't just die for the sins of those in uh, uh, in Jerusalem and Israel. Amen. He just he, Jesus didn't die just for America. Amen. He just didn't die for those who live in the Western Hemisphere. Amen. Jesus died for those in in on the continent of Africa. He died for those in the Middle East. He died for those in Europe and in in, in India and and uh, South America and Canada. He died for the sins of the world. No matter where one may live, Amen. No one can come to the Father but by Him. He's the one who satisfies. The sins of the world, amen? amen? That separated us from the Father. Now the God of peace, verse 20 again, Hebrews 13 and 20. The God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus. He's our great shepherd, a good shepherd, chief shepherd. Through the blood 
of the everlasting covenant. Praise God that we have an everlasting covenant. Amen. Amen. And it's activated and it's ratified by the blood of Jesus. Not by the blood of bulls and gold. Amen. amen. Jesus, amen, by his own blood. He laid his life down. <laughs> Satan had nothing on him. And by his blood, he rose again on the third day according to scripture. Amen. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Let's go there. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And we'll look at verse 54. We begin reading in verse 54. The blood of the everlasting covenant. First Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 54. It says, so when this corruptible have put on incorruption and this mortal shall I put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. And we have that in Jesus Christ. Amen? When this mortal have, I mean, when it's corruptible, have put on incorruption. And the mortal have put on immortality. Then shall be brought to pass the saying, it is written, death is swallowed up in victory. It's swallowed up in the victory we have in Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus Christ is our victor. Amen? Amen. Oh death, where is thy sting? Oh grave, where is thy victory? The, the great death and the grave could not contain and hold our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, our great shepherd, and, and death and the grave would not hold you and I because of his blood. Amen? Look at verse 57. But thanks be to God. I'm sorry, verse 56. The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. Praise God, but we're not under the law. Amen. Amen? The law came by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Yes. But thanks be to God who giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have the victory over death. Amen? And the grave. Amen. Praise God. We have victory over sin, death, and the grave. Amen? Amen. And it's through our Lord Jesus Christ. It's through the blood of his everlasting covenant. Verse 58, therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, amen, the saints, the church of God, we should be steadfast, amen, amen. unmovable, we're not turning around, we're not going back, we're not going back under the uh, Mosaic law and the Levitical priesthood and all these ordinances and traditions, amen, amen. we're unmovable by trials, trouble and tribulation and persecution, we want to stand fast, in Christ, we're unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Amen. 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 Busy for the Lord, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much, or uh, since ye are, since ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Amen. Amen. While we have, while we live under this everlasting covenant, Amen. Let's always abound in the work of the Lord. Let us continue to, Amen. A work for God. Amen? Amen. Let's go to God in prayer on the behalf of others. Let's let's serve others. Let's do unto others as you had them to do unto you. Amen. Amen. Whatever we do, we should do it as unto the Lord. Amen. Amen. Like God won't forget your work and labor of love. Amen. He pays well. Amen. Amen. He and he's he's saving up and he's storing up treasures in heaven for you and I. As we live up under this everlasting covenant. Ratified by the, by the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen? Mm -hmm. We have the victory. We have the victory over sin and death and the grave. Mm -hmm. Just as our Lord and Savior did. Give God a praise. Amen? Mm -hmm. The blood of the covenant. Amen. Go to Zechariah. Chapter 9. A prophetic book of our Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ, Zechariah, right before Malachi. I know we know it, Malachi. We learned that the first month in church. <laughs> Praise the Lord. 
I, I used to be the new member teacher. We're going to make sure y'all know it, Malachi. Right before Malachi. Zechariah, chapter 9, and verse 11. And it reads, as for thee also, see, speaking of the, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, prophetically, as for thee also by the blood of thy covenant, I have sent forth thy prisoners out of the pit where there is no water. Amen? Because of the blood of the covenant, we come out of the pit where there is no water. Do you remember someone who asking for water? Asking, amen, Abraham, the rich man died, and the poor man died, was found, he left, found in, in Abraham's bosom. And, and, and he, he asked Abraham if he would send that just to go dip his finger in, 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 in water for he was thirsty, he was hot, he was, amen. There's no water there. Amen? Mm -hmm. and, but through the blood of the everlasting covenant that we have in Jesus Christ, amen, we, we have been lifted out of the pit wherein there is no water. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. If anyone thinking they go go to hell and have a, a, a fun, good time with their with they friends and their dogs and their uh, 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 associates, amen, well, there would be no water there. That would, that would be one of the torments, everlasting torments, Torments of hell where there is no water. Amen? The worm never dies. The flames never go out. But through the blood of the, uh, the everlasting covenant that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has provided for, uh, amen, for all of the world, amen, uh, all who uh, uh, believe in their heart and confess with their mouth that Jesus is Lord, amen, they shall be saved, amen? He, he provided a way out. And that way out is through him. The through the blood of the everlasting covenant. Let us pray, saints, over and over again that God will send forth more laborers into his harvest. Amen. To the prisoners that's in jail and in prisons now. They, they, amen. They, they think that's, a, that's a lockdown, but amen. it's another prison that has no warning. And we got to pray. We got to pray that God will raise up men and women in the jails and in the prisons. Amen. Not just where, uh, where your family member resides. Not just where the state and county you reside in. But throughout our nation, throughout I mean, the entire world, there are jails and prisons and people who are incarcerated and, amen, and living in a manner, I mean, we couldn't imagine. But we're going to have to pray that God will raise up a man or a woman inside these facilities. There. God will send forth men and women of God inside these facilities, no matter what country. Nothing is too hard for God. I can remember what was, was, was Peter ever in jail? Asleep, and God sent someone, and they sent an angel to wake him up and, and brought him out, saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Mm -hmm. I believe Paul was incarcerated. Amen. And, and God saved him. I believe there was a Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Amen. They was, amen, uh, 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 in the fire and uh, uh, flames, and Daniel was in the lion's den, and God delivered. Amen. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Nothing's too hard for God, no matter what pit they may be in. God can go in and bring them out. Yes, he can. Amen? amen. God will, just as he was with, amen, Joseph, just as he was with David, amen, the Lord is with you and I. Thank you, Father. Yes, and we can pray that he will send forth his laborers into his harvest. Amen? amen. God has laborers we know not of. Mm -hmm. Elijah thought he was the only one left. Amen? amen. And God showed him, I have many prophets left that have, that have not bow they need to bail. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let us not give up hope that there's no one to speak on God's behalf but you. God has a remnant. Yes, he does. And we just have to pray that God will send forth that remnant, amen, into his harvest. Yes, yes. Thank you. Because it's his harvest. Thank you, Father. And, and he died, amen, for all. Yes, amen. Give God a praise. Amen. Look at Hebrews chapter 2. 
Hebrews chapter 2. Praise the Lord. We have victory over death, the grave, and sin through this everlasting covenant. Mm -hmm. Amen? We have victory, saints, yes. over death, hell, and sin, mm -hmm. and the grave. Amen? Mm -hmm. What did I say? Hebrews 2? Mm -hmm. Look at verse, let's read verse 14. Praise the Lord God. Amen. Our Lord and Savior. Amen. Uh, Jesus, the Christ. Amen. He, he came in flesh and blood just like you and I. But yet, when I said, let's read it. For as much then as the children are partakers of the flesh and blood, that's you and I, that's the body of Christ, the children are, we are flesh and blood. He also himself likewise took part of the same. Jesus came in flesh and blood. That's what makes him a, amen. He was, he was tempted at all points, but was yet without sin. That's why he's our great high priest, amen. Mm -hmm. And he can understand the, in, the infirmities and the weaknesses of our flesh because he came in flesh and blood. Yes. Jesus had to have an earth suit. Mm -hmm. He also himself likewise took part of the same. That through death, listen now, uh -huh. through death, that he might destroy him, the devil, that had the power of devil, and that is the devil. That is, that is amen, the devil. Amen? amen? amen. Jesus died. He, he suffered. And he came in flesh and blood, and that earth suit died. When they say Jesus died, that, that, that flesh and blood died, amen? Yes. But Emmanuel, God in him, mm -hmm. God that was in that flesh and blood, amen, mm -hmm. could never die. Satan had nothing on him. They, Satan could have nothing in him. Satan couldn't hold him. But he died for the sins of the world. Praise the Lord. And, and through the shedding of that blood, and through his death and resurrection, he laid down his life and he took it up again because Satan had nothing in him. He couldn't hold him. Death and the grave could not hold our Lord and Savior. And death in the grave would not hold you and I and everyone who believed that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Yeah. Every one of us that continue to go forward in him. We're not going back to the Mosaic law. We're not going back to the Levitical priesthood system. We're not going back worshiping in a temple. Our body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Jesus has provided everything that we need. Amen? Yeah. Praise the Lord. Go to Hebrews chapter 9. He, he defeated death. The grave. Sin. Hebrews 9. And through his death and resurrection, through the shedding of his blood, through this everlasting covenant, Jesus uh, uh, ratified and Jesus amen, augmented this new covenant that we live under. Amen? amen? This is, is a new and living way. Hebrews 9, and I begin in verse, verse 12. Let me start in verse 11. But Christ, Hebrews 9 and 11, but Christ being come a high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, amen, the heavenly tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, the one that, amen, that was built on, on this earth, neither by the blood of bulls and goats. That's why, amen, uh, uh, Jesus uh, came by a, a more perfect tabernacle because it was not ratified by the blood of bulls and, and goats and calves, but by his own blood. Amen. He entered in once into the holy place having obtained eternal redemption for us. Amen? Mm -hmm. Jesus obtained our eternal redemption when he entered once into the holy place with his own blood. Amen? Mm -hmm. That blood of the everlasting covenant. Amen? Mm -hmm. Look at verse 13. For if the blood of bulls and goats the blood of bulls and of goats 
and the ashes of a heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctified to the purified of the flesh. Amen? And we know, saints, amen, if you don't know, let me share with you, Jerusalem is looking uh, next year, amen, at a red heifer at a certain age of uh, uh, two years old, amen, they have uh, five red heifers in Israel, in Jerusalem, that they're looking to, amen, sacrifice next year if they are without defect to, amen, before they can begin uh, uh, to rebuild a third temple, they have to have a red heifer to clean the, the priest. And, and the Levites, they're trying to bring back that mo mosaic system, amen, of the Levitical system. And this is what the scripture is talking about. For the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of a heifer sprinkling the unclean. And they're, they're going to do that next year. We're going to read about it. We're going to hear about it. Amen. And we'll, I'll bring it to your attention. You could bring it to my attention. But saints, we're living in the, in the last days. Amen. Amen. These things are coming to pass in our age. Amen. Amen. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of a heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifies to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, that, that blood of the everlasting covenant, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God? Amen? Yeah. He offered himself without spot without defect to God. Amen? Mm -hmm. To purge your conscience from dead works. Amen? The dead works of the Levitical priesthood system. Mm -hmm. The dead works, the Apostle Paul speaks here in the book of Hebrews, the dead works, amen, of the Mosaic law and keeping the law through Christ, through the blood of Christ, amen, through the eternal spirit, he offered himself, Jesus did, without spot to God. He went in once into the holy place to offer himself without spot to God to purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God, amen? We're not going back to dead works. We're not going back to dead works. We're not going to trample on the foot the blood of Christ. We, we believe and we are sure, amen, and we receive that blood. Yes. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Look at Romans 6 and 9. They talk about the blood of the everlasting covenant. He's the last Adam. <laughs> Romans 6. Romans 6 and 9, through the blood of the everlasting covenant. Amen. Jesus, is, has, he's our victor. Our victory is in him over death, the grave, sin, never to die no more. Amen. Amen. Listen, look at verse 9, uh, uh, Romans 6 and 9. It reads, knowing that Christ being raised from the dead, he died no more. That's why he, it's a, he's the everlasting priest. We are under everlasting covenant. He died no more. Amen? Amen. He died once. He died once. He laid on his life once for our sins. But he died no more. And death has no more dominion over him. Amen? Amen. For verse 10. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he now liveth unto to God. Amen? Yes. He liveth well and how? He liveth unto God. Amen? Yes. For you and I, and we liveth unto God. Amen? Yes. We're not going back to dead works. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. Amen. You write this down in Revelation 118. Uh, amen. Jesus says, I am he that liveth. He says, I'm the first and the last in verse 17. Verse 18, Revelation 18, 1 and 18. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold what? I am alive forevermore. Mm -hmm. And I have the keys of hell and death. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Jesus has the keys of hell and death. Praise to God. Amen. Mm -hmm. Death has, amen, no hold on our Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. He has been risen. He's risen from the dead 
on the third day according to scripture, amen? Mm -hmm. And he would never, he would never die again. Look at Hebrews 7. Hebrews 7 and verse 28. Praise the Lord. Hebrews 7, 28. Amen. Through the blood of the everlasting covenant. Verse 28, let me read it. Hebrews 7 and 28. For the law maketh make me and high priest. The law. Again, under the Mosaic law and the Levitical priesthood system. The law maketh me and high priest which has infirmities, which has weaknesses. But the word of the oath, which was since the law, maketh the son who is consecrated forevermore. Amen? Amen? The word of the oath, the word of God. Yes. Which was since the law, maketh Jesus, maketh the son who is consecrated forevermore. The, the everlasting priesthood, the everlasting amen, covenant is in Jesus. Yes. We got to pray saints that, amen, people are, 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 are saints are not, uh, our brothers and sisters in Christ are not going back under the Mosaic law. Going back under the Levitical priesthood because uh, we, there's no need to attempt to keep the law. Jesus has kept it perfectly, perfectly for you and I. But there are some who believe in that they have to go and keep uh, certain aspects of the law and certain traditions and certain uh, uh, holy days and amen. But Christ has fulfilled all of that for you and I. And we're going to go continue to go forward in Christ. Amen. We're going to pray for others. Amen. That they will continue to go forward and trust God that he sent his only begotten son. Amen. And bind through him all has been fulfilled. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9. And verse 28. Hebrews 9 and 28. We're talking about the blood of the everlasting covenant. Hebrews 9, 28. And it reads, And so Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many. He was once offered to bear the sins of many. And unto them that look for him shall he appear. For them that look for him. See, everyone is not looking for him. Everyone don't believe they're not, they don't believe when they're sure that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. To whom shall we go? Peter said to Jesus. Do you want to leave also? Jesus came to his own, and his own received him not. And the son today doesn't believe that he is the Son of the living God, that he is the Savior of the world. So Christ was once offered to... Uh, to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time. He's coming again. The second time without sin unto salvation. Amen. He's coming to receive his people. He's prepared a place for us, and he's coming to do what? To receive us again. Amen. And we're going to meet the Lord in the end, the moment in the twinkling of an eye. Amen. The dead in Christ will rise first and those that are living at that time, amen, those who are enduring, amen, will, will rise up and they will meet the Lord in the air. Amen. 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 Praise God. I thank God for his deliver, the deliverance we have in him. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. While we're here, chapter 10, we're right here, we're looking at Hebrews 10. And verse 3. Hebrews 10 and verse 3. We're, we're speaking to Christ. Amen. Death and resurrection. He, he was raised again never to die again. Let's read it verse 3. Hebrews 10 and verse 3. But in those sacrifices. Amen. Speaking of the sacrifices of the old covenant. That they offered year by year. If you go back to verse, verse 1 and 2. But in those sacrifices, there is remembrance again made for sin every year. Amen? There's a remembrance made every year. For it is not possible, listen now, 
That's why we had the blood of the everlasting covenant. Verse 4, for it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats should take away sin. Mm -hmm. See? The, the blood of the red heifer that Israel, the nation of Israel, even to this day, is raising to, to defect at, to, at the age of two that they're going to sacrifice for the removal of sin for the, for the priest and the Levitical system. It doesn't take away sin. Amen. Only the blood of Jesus takes away sin. Amen. But many are deceived, amen. Yes, yes. The very people of God, that the, this red heifer is going to take away sin. The blood of bulls and, 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 and uh, 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 bulls and goat don't take away sin. Only the blood of Jesus through the everlasting covenant. Yes. Wherefore, listen now. It's not possible that the blood of bulls and goats should take away sin. Verse 5, wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he says, sacrifice and offerings, thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me. Amen? Mm -hmm. What do we have? We have a body through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Listen now, in burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, thou hast no pleasure. Mm -hmm. Amen? Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do thy will, O God. Amen? Mm -hmm. Burn offering, sacrifices, the, the blood of bulls and goats. Amen. Christ, our Lord and Savior. Jesus, our Lord and Savior. God, our Father. Amen. Has no pleasure in. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, I come in the volume of, of the book. It's written of me. From Genesis to Revelation, Amen. it's written of me. Amen. It's written of me to do thy will, O God. Yes. Verse 8. And above, when he said, sacrifice and offerings and burnt offerings and offerings for sin, thou wouldest not. Over and over there, and this passage is going to repeat about these offerings for sin. These offerings of, of the blood of bulls and goats. Listen now. Sacrifices and offerings and burnt offerings and offerings for sin, thou wouldest not. Neither had his pleasure therein, which are offered by the law. Mm -hmm. See, those offerings, those offerings of the blood of bulls and goats are offered by the law. Mm -hmm. Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. That's what Jesus did. Mm -hmm. He came to do the will of the Father. Read the Gospel of John. He takes away the first, amen. In order for him to do the will of the Father, he taketh the way the first up under, amen, Mo Moses, amen, amen, that he may establish the second. So you have to remove the first. Right. To establish the second, and sadly, we have some trying to combine them. Uh, uh, some just trying to just keep the first because they don't believe that Jesus is the Savior of the world. They don't believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first, amen, that he may establish the second. Yes. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the blood of Jesus Christ once for all. We are what? Sanctified. We are what? We're made holy. We're made righteous. How? Through the offering of the body. Not the body of bulls and goats. Amen. Not the body of a red heifer. We're sanctified, we're more holy, we're made righteous, amen, by the body of Jesus Christ. Amen. That body that had nails in his hands and his feet. Amen. That body that was, amen, uh, beard was pulled out, he was spit upon and, 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 and struck in the face, amen. amen. And beaten with a cat of nine tails and that body that had a, a sword pierced his side, amen. We are sanctified through that body. Amen. Through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ. And he offered his own body for our sins. Mm -hmm. He offered his own body. Who did he offer to? He offered his blood to Jesus. I mean to the Father. He offered his body for our sins. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. He had to endure the pain. This, this torture that he went through. This flesh and blood. And we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ. Once for all, there's no need 
There's no need for now offering the blood of bulls and goats and the red heifers. We're made holy by the, by the body of Jesus Christ and his death and resurrection. Look at verse 11. And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices. Offering the same sacrifices, the blood of bulls and goats, which can never take away sin. Did we, did we just read that? Yes. It's emphasis. The blood of bulls and goats can never take away sin. Saints, the only blood that can take away your sins and my sins and the sins of the world is Jesus Christ. Amen. Through the blood of the everlasting covenant. Amen? Amen? We don't have to wait to Easter to talk about the blood of Jesus. Amen? Amen? We need to talk more about the preachers. We need to speak more. We need to teach more and, 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 and preach more about the blood of Jesus. We don't have to wait to Easter. Every priest, Old Testament, standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices which can never take away sin. But this man, mm -hmm. Jesus, this man who activated, ratified, amen, this, this, the blood of the everlasting covenant. This man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sin forever, he offered one sacrifice. Who was that? Himself, his body, his blood. He offered one sacrifice for sin forever. What did he do? He sat down on the right hand of God. The Old Testament priests, they never sat down in the presence of God because they ne their work was never complete. But through Jesus, his work is complete for the forgiveness of sin. Amen? Amen. So Jesus, once he offered himself for sin forever, he sat down on the right hand of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. From henceforth, expect until his enemies be made his footstool. Amen? Mm -hmm. He just waiting to the enemies. Satan and all the fallen angels and all who reject Christ, mm -hmm. they will be made his footstool. Mm -hmm. Every knee is going to bow. Every tongue is going to confess that Jesus is Lord. Amen? Amen? Mm -hmm. Look at verse 14. For by one offering he has perfected forever them that are sanctified. For by one offering, see there it is again, there's no need for another offering, saint. For by himself, he's saying, by himself, this one offering is Jesus himself. By himself, this one offering, he has perfected, he has completed. Forever. We're complete forever. We don't have to go back and do some performance. Amen? He has completed, he has perfected us forever. Them that are sanctified. Well, verse 15, the Holy Ghost also is the witness to us. Amen. That Holy Ghost that we have received is a witness that we are sanctified, made holy forever. We are sealed by the Holy Ghost. That Holy Ghost is a down payment on our eternal inheritance. It's a witness for us. It's a witness. Amen. Well, the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us. It's a witness for us. It's a witness to us. Amen. For after he had said before, this is the covenant. This is now. This everlasting covenant that's made by the blood of the everlasting covenant. This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts. And in their mind will I write them. No more on, the, on, the, on stones. Amen? Yeah. But in our heart and in our mind. And their sin and iniquities will I remember no more. Yeah. And praise the Lord. We receive this through the blood of the everlasting covenant of Christ. Yes. Our sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Now where remission of these is, where forgiveness of these is, there is no more offering for sin. See? There's forgiveness of sin. There's no more offering for sin. Amen? I was seen in iniquities. The word of God says, Christ remembers no more. He removed them as far as the east is from the west. Amen? Amen. And we receive that through the everlasting, praise God, the everlasting 
covenant. Amen? Amen. God is good. Amen? Praise the Lord. Look if you would at Amen. This everlasting covenant. Thanks. Let's 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 stick with God. Let's stick with Jesus. <laughs> let, let, let's remain in Him. Amen. Amen. But there's no need for uh, a, another sacrifice. We have our sacrifice once in Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. That blood of the that everlasting covenant. I thank God. Amen. That we have. Uh, as, a, as a savior, amen, one who was without sin, our great high priest, amen, and he would never leave us nor forsake us, amen, and he's sitting down at the right hand of the Father, amen, interceding on the behalf of the saints, whatever our struggles and trials and temptations may be, amen, Jesus is there, amen, looking upon us. Delivering us, protecting us, providing for us. Amen. We could come boldly to the throne of grace. Because he's the initiator of the everlasting covenant. Blood covenant. Through the blood of the everlasting covenant. Let's go on. Let's go back to Hebrews chapter 13 and verse, verse 20. Amen. Hebrews. 13 and verse amen verse 20 let's read it again now the God of peace how, how many know it's good to have a God of peace oh, yes. and we have that peace saints because of Jesus because he Offer his body and his blood once for all. Amen? He's the propitiation. So now we have peace with God because of Jesus. And we have the peace of God. Amen? Jesus said what? My peace I leave with you. I give unto you. Not the peace that the world gives. We have the peace of God. Amen? Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead. He died. There are false teachings out there now saying Jesus didn't really die. Mm -hmm. Let us be perfectly clear. He died. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Amen? Because the God of peace brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant. Amen? Mm -hmm. Look at Hebrews. Let's look at chapter 8. As we're closing on uh, this uh, expository teaching on the book of Hebrews, amen, I'm going to uh, use a lot of previous passages to just drive home our final points, amen, mm -hmm. of what God has taught us in this epistle, amen? Mm -hmm. Hebrews 8 and verse 6. The blood of the everlasting covenant but foretold throughout the whole entire um, Old Testament. Amen? Mm -hmm. the, the Old Testament, amen, uh, conceal the New Testament. The New Testament reveal the Old Testament. We got to know both. Amen? Yes. Look at verse 6. Hebrews 8 and 6. But now, speaking of God, speaking of our Lord and Savior, has he obtained a more excellent ministry? See, Jesus' ministry is more, is more excellent than that of Moses. Because Moses was a servant in the house. Jesus is the son over the house. We have a more excellent ministry through Jesus Christ. Amen? But now has he obtained a more excellent ministry? But by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant. Jesus is the mediator. I said that earlier. Which was established upon better promises. We have better promises in the blood of the everlasting covenant. Amen? Mm -hmm. Better promise than the covenant of the Old Testament. Amen? Mm -hmm. For if that first covenant had been faultless, listen now, then should no place have been sought for the second. What was the fault of the first covenant? It couldn't deliver. There's no forgiveness of sin in the first covenant. 
So if there's no forgiveness of sin in the first coming through the blood of bulls and goats, we could not be restored again to the Father. Amen? Amen. So God had no intentions of, of, of the first covenant uh, 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 bringing us uh, into intimacy with him again, but through Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. So that first covenant, if it had been faultless, and the fault was, it could not remove sin and iniquity. You wrote that down? Yes. That's the fault of the first covenant. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. So that it had to be a second and it had to be in our Lord and Savior. Yeah. Verse 8. For finding fault with them, he said, Behold, the days come, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant. Because the, the first covenant had a fault in it. It couldn't forgive sin. It covered the sin. Behold, the days come, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. Because they continued not in my covenant. We know a 40, 11 day journey. But should have been an 11 day journey turned into a 40 year wilderness experience. Amen? Amen. But they continue, because they continue not in obedience to the covenant. And I regarded them not, says the Lord. Alright? Now look at verse 10. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind, and I will write them in their heart, and I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. Amen. That's the covenant we're under. Amen? I will put my laws into their mind and I will write them in their hearts. Amen. I will make for the house of Israel after the, the after those days. This, this new covenant. Look at verse 11. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother saying, know the Lord. Know the Lord. For all shall know me. Amen. Because God had put it within everyone to know him. No one will stand before the Lord Amen. He put it in our conscience. Amen. For all shall know me from the least to the greatest. Amen. For I will be, I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. There it is again. In that he says a new covenant. He has made the first old. God has made the first old. We can't go back to what God has made old. God has made it old because he has a new covenant. Now that which decayeth and waxes old is ready to vanish away. Amen. Give God a praise. Yeah. It, 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 it should be uh, 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 vanished away. Amen. Amen. God is good. Let's go on. I have a few more minutes. Let's see. Can we go into verse 21 for a little while? Praise the Lord. Go back to Hebrews 13. Mm -hmm. We'll be in verse 21 for, for just a little while. Let, let me read both verses together for, uh, for understanding. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant makes you perfect in every good work to do his will. Amen? God does what? He makes us perfect to do what? To do his will. Amen? Look at Philippians. He makes us perfect. Verse chapter 1. We're, we're in real soon here. He makes us perfect to do his will. Wow. He makes us complete. And Colossians tell us that we are complete in Christ. We're made complete in Christ. And I believe in Colossians 2 and 10. Amen? He makes you perfect in every good work. Look at Philippians 1 and 6. It says, 
Let's be confident of this very thing. That he, he which has begun a good work in you, we're performing it. We're performing it until the day of Jesus Christ. And we know it is, amen, our Father who has begun this good work in us. Amen? He called us into his marvelous life. When we were what? Without strength. We were ungodly. We were sinners, it tells us, amen, in Romans 5. And we were at enmity against God. We were his very enemies. But what did God do? Let's be confident of this very thing. That he which has begun a good work in you. God began his good work in you. Amen. Began his good work in me. And began to give this good work in everyone who believes in our sure. God began it. Amen. Amen. And it's by grace. Amen. He began his good work in you. And we're performing until the day of Jesus Christ. God is going to be working and perfecting and completing us to Jesus' return. Amen. 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 Look at verse um, chapter 2. Philippians 2. And verse 12 and 13. We're speaking about this. Amen. God has, amen, makes you perfect in every good work to do his will. Amen. That's why we live. To do his will. Jesus, I, I came to do the, my father's will, not my own will. Since we got to wake up every day, every day, and think about what God would have me to do today. What God would have you and I to do today. What's his will for me today? Amen. It, it's something God wants you to do every day for him. Amen. We're not just living unto ourselves and 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 and, and because we have a, a season now of, of peace and, and health and strength in our bodies and mind and in our finances. It's something God wants us to do. What, what is God's will for me today? It, it could be something small to you, but it could be something encouraging to someone else. Find someone who needs your help. Find someone who needs to hear a word from the Lord. We gotta stay alert. Philippians 2 and 12. We, we're living to do his will. Wherefore, my beloved, the apostle Paul says it to the Philippians, say, Wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. You know, when the preacher, when the pastor leaves and go out of town and go on vacation, some saints we be missing. Amen. Oh, you can tell when the uh, we, we can tell when the Amen when the when the pastor got to take a vacation. Oh, this is my opportunity. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. That's okay. That's okay. Is that is that is that the Lord calling for me? That might be Jesus. Okay, I thought it was. Amen. That's all right. That's all right. Could have been the Lord. All right, let's go now. We're going, to, we're going to close. Philippians 2 and 12. Wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Amen? Work out your own salvation. You didn't say work for your salvation. You work it out. Amen. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Amen? For Christ has made us perfect in every good work to do his will so therefore we're going to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. Why with fear and trembling? Because it was God who has began this good work in you. So you got to work it out. Work it out between who? You and God. Paul, the apostle Paul says I'm, 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 I'm absent right now. I'm not there. I'm expecting you to, to, to obey. Not in my presence only but now much more. In my absence. And you work out your own salvation with fear and trembling because our salvation comes through Jesus Christ. Amen. Not through a man. Through the blood of the everlasting covenant. Look at verse 13. Okay, there it is. For it is God. It is God which worketh in you, as it spoke of in verse chapter 1, verse 6. 
For it is God who worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Amen? It is God who's working in you, saints. He began this good work in you. And it is God who's working in you. If we can stay conscious that God is working in us, we are vessels fit for the master's use, and God is, is working in us, and he, he brought about you and I through the blood of the everlasting covenant, through the a life, through the death, through the sacrifice of his only begotten son, amen? We were working our salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who worketh in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. Amen. We'll stop there. Give God a praise. Amen. I believe that's a good spot to, amen, to stop right there. Amen. No understanding that it's God's good pleasure to work out his to, to work out his will in us. We are to work for him. We're to serve him each and every day of our lives. Whatever we do, we do it as unto the Lord. Amen? Yeah. No matter how small it may appear. It's as unto the Lord. We are ambassadors for Christ. Amen? Yeah. I praise God and I thank God today for you and I, Saint, being here in the presence of the Lord. And, and I thank God that you and I, we have heard his still, small voice. Amen? Yeah. Let us understand. Our God is the God of peace. He's a God of peace. He brought again from the dead our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. He's our great shepherd. The Bible says he's our good shepherd. The Bible says he's our chief shepherd. And, and he's the chief shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant. And he makes you and I perfect. He makes you and I complete. The Bible tells us, I didn't go there, for Colossians 2.10, that we are complete in him. We are complete in him in every good work to do his will. I thank God for you tonight. Praise the Lord. I pray that you heard God's still small voice. Amen. And let us understand what God is doing. Amen. He has a purpose. He has a will. And we are to accomplish it. Amen. Amen.